The Mirabal Sisters, Breaking Barriers in the Dominican Republic, Setting the Tone for Feminism, and Putting an End to an Oppressive and Misogynistic Society. Referring to the barriers broken over the course of history, the Mirabal Sisters broke barriers in the Dominican Republic. These three women... Minerva Mirabal, Patria Mirabal, and finally, Mari Teresa Mirabal. These three women set the tone for feminism early on in a patriarchal society that was oppressive to its citizens. They were a big part of the underground movement, which was dedicated to taking down the notorious dictatorship of Rafael Trujillo. Because of these three women, and their legacy that they left behind, we are able to not only identify, but to recognize and commemorate them, analyzing both long-term and short-term impacts that they left on not only the Dominican Republic, but the rest of the world. But before we get into all of that, let's start with the beginning of this very interesting story. Rafael Trujillo was born on October 24th, 1891. He rose to power because he joined the U.S. Marines and eventually higher ranked in the military. As he rose higher, he only got stronger and more powerful. He eventually had the title of the President of the Dominican Republic. For the most part, the Dominican Republic had a stable economy. They they depended mainly on their plantation economy, which was on the western side of the island. Most people in the Dominican Republic were substantial farmers, and because of this, they were able to earn a decent living and have a middle-class life. On the western side of the island was where Haitia was located, and that was where all the plantation farms were centralized. He didn't just choose random people to invest in his plantation. He chose white males. He chose white male plantation owners specifically to mingle with the people of Haitia, to impregnate them and to make the rest of the population more white. This was one of his beliefs and he did not like black people. He also made people call him El Jefe, which in other word in Spanish means the boss or simply boss. This was his way of showing his dominance over his citizens. And that was their way of showing his re- their mutual respect for him. Everything these people did needed to be approved by him. Songs, everything. Nothing could go past him without being approved. And if it was, you would be killed and anybody involved. For example, this next song you'll hear was specifically made just for him. That would, was one of many ways he tried to exert his dominance over his citizens. Now on to the Mirabel sisters. They were all born during the late 1920s. 
As they grew older, their mother, Mercedes Mirabal, and their father, Enrique Mirabal, raised them like any other girls at their age during this time period. The three of them were very smart girls, and they knew what they were doing. They eventually got sent off to Catholic school. And then there, that is where the story truly begins. What used to be a common trend in the Dominican Republic was that whenever Trujillo would visit a school, a school, Catholic, charter, whatever it may be, he always made the teachers and the staff perform a little play or musical for him as a show, as a show of respect toward him. Minerva was happened to be in one of the schools that Trujillo went to. Minerva was one of the girls that happened to catch Tru Trujillo's eyes, but he did not pick her. He picked another unfortunate little girl, and he took her away. And with most of those girls, they'd be taken away and never seen again. As time went on and Minerva, Patria, and Mari Teresa grew up, they all started forming lives. Minerva, however, wanted to become one of the first lawyers in the Dominican Republic. However, she still wasn't off Trujillo's radar. He had remembered her, her face, and that was what led to one of the biggest conflicts in the Dominican Republic history. Trujillo decided to make a move on Minerva. However, unlike every other girl in the country, she was not okay with it. He tried to touch her butt and, and slapped him in front of everyone in the ball, which he did not take very lightly. From there on out, his mission was to make her and her sister's life a living hell. He specifically targeted Mira Minerva Mirabal. He tried to prevent her from graduating law school, and he allowed her to, of course, with his signed permission. But, being as it may, he did not allow her to practice nor graduate law. Here are actual photos of student documents kept by people while Minerva was attending law school. But his reign of torture didn't stop there. He not only put her father in prison unlawfully, but eventually he did the same to her. And this was all because she and her sisters wouldn't accept his inexcusable and vile behavior. They stood up for what they believed in. And he truly, truly couldn't see that. However, tragedy really struck on November 25th, 1960. The three sisters were assassinated by men who worked for Trujillo. In this picture, you see the chases of the Jeep. They were driving this Jeep coming back from the prison that their husbands were in. And when they got taken out of the Jeep, that was when they were assassinated. After their deaths, people couldn't accept this behavior anymore. And because of that, the revolution truly took off. And it was successful. People were able to overthrow Trujillo, and he, and he died on May 30th, 1961. As amazing as the revolution was, it was only one of many short-term and long-term impacts that affected the Dominican Republic. To, this is a picture of their current currency to dedicate the Mirabal sisters and show their appreciation for their legacy. One of the biggest impacts was on December 17, 1999, the United Nations decided to dedicate November 25th as International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women to commemorate and honor the Mirabal sisters. So it's safe to say these women broke barriers not only in DR, but the rest of the world.